of the offender. So let me give you an example that illustrates kind of the difference between these two, and then we'll get into each of these models in detail. I was seeing a woman who, uh, a marriage and family therapist, and when um, she had her first child, she began to have flashbacks about her father, who was an alcoholic at the time when she was a child. And she began to remember how she would sit on the couch watching television with him. And he would be drinking, and he'd put his arm around her. And slowly, he would wend his hand down her arm and fondle her breasts. And she would sit there frozen with terror and anger and disgust, not saying anything. So these memories began, came back to her. And she went to her father, and she told him of her memories. And he said to her, uh, you know, Susie, uh, I, I was a raging alcoholic then. I don't have a lot of memories from that era of your childhood. I, I honestly don't remember doing what you say I did. But I don't remember a lot of things. And frankly, you're not the kind of person to make up a story like this. So I, I'm sick hearing about this, about my behavior. I, I'm sick over it. What can I do to make it up to you? So she thought about it, and she said, well, OK, Dad. So here's the deal. You are never to touch me again, privately or in public, when we greet each other. And as my children grow up, you are never to be with them alone. When I call home, you have caller ID. I want to speak to mom. Let mom answer the phone. If I want to speak to you, I will ask her to hand the phone to you. So he listened and he said, I understand. All of that is fine. Uh, what she was asking for is not unusual for a sexually abused person who wants control over the physical contact and, co and connection with the abuser. So what happened is um, she went on and um, had a second child and shortly thereafter discovered that her husband had, was having an affair. And they got into couples therapy and uh, he, he said he was very sorry and uh, she took him back and they worked on their marriage. And then six months later she discovered that he had been lying the whole time, had continued to see the affair person, and it was at that point that she decided to get a divorce. Uh, as a sideline, the, um, her daughter came to her, nine years old at that point, and um, she said, you know, Mommy, Daddy is so sorry. Um, can't you forgive Daddy, Mommy? He's really, really sorry. And besides, I've been thinking it over. And if you and Daddy get a divorce, it's likely that Daddy's going to go on and get remarried. And probably he's going to have more children with his new wife. And those children are going to live with Daddy. And I'm going to have to live with you. And Daddy's going to love those children more than he loves me. So mommy, can't you make it work? So you can just imagine how hard it was for a marriage and family therapist to do this, the pressure for her to forgive and to reconcile. It didn't help that her couples therapist also pressured her to forgive and called me one day and said, um, what can we do to help this couple save their marriage? 
What can we do to help her let him back into her life? What can we do? And my response was, we could respect her decision. This is a woman who has made a very thoughtful, not an impulsive decision about her life. She has trust issues from her early years. She has trust issues with her husband. She's already given him a chance. There are no more chances. She has hit her bottom line. And we can respect her decision to create safety in her life and not put more pressure on her to forgive. Often, couples therapists, family therapists, believe that there's something healthy in forgiving, that it's the job of the hurt party to forgive, when this can be, I believe, very destructive. Um, and so she got divorced and bought a new house and moved in with her kids. Her father came over and vacuumed the house from top to bottom, went out into the backyard and planted a garden. And um, one day he was there visiting and um, the nine-year-old came, dropped off from soccer practice and she started to change out of her soccer clothes in front of her grandfather. And he said to the little girl, he said, you know what, Deb, you're, you're, you're too old to be getting undressed in front of grandpa. I'm going to go out in the backyard, put on your street clothes, come on out, and we'll play a little soccer together. He immediately got on his cell phone, called his daughter, and he told her what had happened. So what do you think happened between the father and the daughter? Basically, she began to forgive him and she chose to reconcile, you see, because he earned her trust through bold, concrete acts. It wasn't something done in her head. He respected her boundaries and he earned back her trust. Um, and she let him back into her life. This, to me, is an example of genuine forgiveness.